I'm interested right now in Genesis chapter 32. We'll begin reading verse number 24. The Bible says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. When he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called uh, the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the sweet spirit of God that's in this place this morning. We thank you for being a good God. Lord, you didn't have to die on the cross. You chose to die on the cross. Uh, you didn't have to redeem us. You chose to redeem us. Uh, you made a way where old sinners could be saved from their sins. Uh, the Lord, be adopted into the family of God, become children of God. Uh, Father, we don't know what you saw in us, but God, we're glad you saw something uh, that caused you to bleed and die on Calvary for our sin. Uh, now, Father, thank you for being a great God. Uh, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Uh, thank you, Lord, for caring about us and being our friend. Uh, Thank you, Lord, for uh, being far better to us than we are to you. Uh, and, Lord, we bless your holy name. Uh, now, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. Uh, I pray you'd arrest our attention. Uh, I pray that, God, for Holy Ghost conviction, uh, I pray if there's anybody lost without God, uh, don't know what it is to have a friend in Jesus. Uh, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray for the saints of God. Uh, God, you'd stir in their hearts. Uh, you'd help them to remember where you found them. Uh, God, you'd revive their heart and their soul. Uh, and God, you'd set us afire for thee. Uh, that God, when we leave this place, uh, we'd shine as lights. Uh, that God, we'd make an impact in this world before it's everlasting too late. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel and get glory to your glorious name. We'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. Uh, here we find the account where God uh, changes Jacob's name to Israel. Can I uh, just draw your attention for a couple minutes on the introduction? Uh, uh, here we find that Jacob wrestled with God. Can I say, anybody that's ever been saved by the good grace of God, you wrestled with God. Uh, News lost, uh, 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 got under conviction, uh, 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 started realizing you was lost. Uh, uh, you didn't realize all that was going on, but the sweet Holy Ghost of God was drawing you to God, uh, uh, was wooing you to God, uh, was trying to let you know you didn't have to die and go to hell, uh, uh, trying to let you know uh, uh, that your sins could be forgiven. Uh, and He began to woo you, uh, and you began to lose sleep at night. Uh, you began to worry about the, uh, where you'd spend eternity and all it was with God was a wrestling with you. God was trying to get you to come to the end of yourself. Realize you couldn't save yourself. You couldn't help yourself. But if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus, He changed your life. Aren't you glad that God wrestled with you? Can I say, since you've been saved, God's wrestled with you. There's been times you've been sitting in the church house and God began to speak to your heart. I began to say, you need to get something right with God. And hey, you'd come and do business with God. Uh, 
we find that Jacob uh, wrestled with God. Can I say in these verses we find that Jacob was wounded by God? Mm, in the midst of the wrestling, uh, God touched his thigh. And he was wounded by God. Can I say, I believe it was Vince Havner said that God can't use a man greatly until he's wounding deeply. Can I say a lot of times God has to wound us. The great apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Sometimes God has to put something in our life to keep our egos in check, to cause us uh, 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 to uh, swallow our stinking pride, uh, and to cause us to follow after him. Uh, we find that Jacob was wounded by God, but then we find that Jacob became a great witness for God. Look again at verse number 32. It says, Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's uh, thigh. Hey, can I say, all of Israel took notice of what God did in Jacob's life. Hmm? I'm interested in verse 25 this morning. Verse 25, it says, And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. I'm interested where it says he touched the hollow of his thigh. I ought to preach with God's help on just for a few minutes this morning on he touched me. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Third Saturday night of March 1974, he came by to where I was, yeah. and he touched me. Oh, there's nothing like the hand of God on your life. Uh, there's nothing like when He touches you. Uh, there's nothing like when He uh, uh, shows up uh, and He puts His finger on your life uh, and He changes you for all of eternity. Uh, uh, can I say He touched me by confronting me? Look again in verse number 24. Uh, the Bible says, And Jacob was left... Uh, alone. Uh, Jacob was confronted by Almighty God. Uh, Jacob was all alone. He had no helper. Uh, he had no one else he could depend on. Uh, he had no one else he could blame it on. Uh, he had no one else or no other leg to stand on. Uh, he was confronted by God. Uh, aren't you glad that God confronts us? Uh, hey, aren't you glad he came to where you was uh, and he said, it's you, uh, it's you, uh, it's you. Uh, can I say he confronted us uh, about our sin? Uh, he let us know it was our sin that hung him on the cross. Uh, it was our sin uh, uh, that displeased him. Uh, he confronts us about our sin. Uh, even after you've been saved, you get sin in your life uh, and the Holy Ghost comes by uh, and he confronts you and lets you know he's not pleased with your sin. Uh, uh, can I say this? He confronted you about your selfishness. Uh, uh, Jacob was a selfish fella. Uh, hey, all he did was looked out for number one uh, and God came by his way. Uh, let him know he was worthless. Uh, it's all about the king of glory. Uh, hey, he confronted him about his selfishness. Uh, how many times has God come by your way? Uh, let you know it's not about you uh, and what you're doing. Uh, it's about him that matters. Uh, hey, uh, can I say this? Uh, he confronts us uh, about being governed by Satan. Uh, uh, listen, uh, Jacob was being run by Satan all of his life. Uh, until he con was confronted by the Lord. Uh, so was you. Uh, uh, you walked according to the prince of the power of this air. Uh, hey, uh, you were owned by Satan. Uh, he dictated your life uh, until you met the master uh, who redeemed you from your sin and from Satan. Uh, I'm glad for the day he confronted me. Had I never been confronted by God, I wouldn't have known I was lost. Had I never been confronted by God, I would have never known I was headed down that broad way which leaded to destruction. Uh, had I never been confronted by God, I'd have never known there was a place called heaven and I could go there. Oh, can I say he touched me by confronting me? Can I say, secondly, he touched me through conviction? Look with me again in verse 24. He said, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Thank God he confronted me with conviction. He wrestled with me, and he wrestled with you. Hmm? 
Listen, I'm all for salvation is easy. But easy believism has taken conviction out of it. Hmm? No one will ever truly get born again until they realize they're lost, and that takes conviction. You've got to be convicted before you know you need a pardon. Hmm? Ah, thank God he touched me through conviction. I'm glad I knew I was lost when I got saved. Hmm? Ah, can I say this? He touched me through converting me. Look with me in verse 27. The Bible says that he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Uh, I'm glad he converted me, cleansed me from my sin. Uh, can I say this? Jacob means supplanter, means deceiver. All he ever done was deceive people. He deceived his father, deceived his brother, got his brother's birthright, and deceived everywhere he went. Deceived, deceived, deceived. By the time we get here to chapter 32, verse 24, uh, he's run from his father-in-law. His father-in-law's pursued after him. Uh, 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 he's running from his brother. Uh, his brother's on the way to confront him with 400 men. Uh, he's always on the run because he's deceiving. Uh, uh, can I help you with something this morning? Uh, some of you are trying to outrun your past, but you can't. Uh, it's always going to catch up to you. Uh, but a beautiful thing, uh, when the Lord converts you and saves your never dying soul, uh, your past is gone. Uh, you get a fresh start with Jesus Christ. Uh, he says, you are Jacob, but from here on, you're going to be known as Israel. Mm. Uh, Israel, what's that mean, the Prince of God? Uh, by the way, Israel is still God's chosen people. Met a missionary this week to Israel. I'm going to get him up here. Uh, and he's getting ready to go over there and live over there. They provided a place for him over there. Even in the midst of COVID, not being able to travel and all that, they have opened him with open arms. Uh, been going to Israel for a long time, winning Jews to God. What a blessing. But can I say this? When God saved you, he, he converted you from a sinner to the saint of God. And can I say, Brother Josh, when you got saved, he wrote a new name down for you in heaven. Ah. Uh, we know you as Brother Josh. He knows you as something else. He knows you as a son. <laughs> what a blessing. Huh? Hey, I'm glad he touched me uh, and he converted me. Uh, I'm no longer a sinner. Uh, I'm a saint of God. Uh, hey, either you're a saint or you ain't. That's just the way it is. Uh, I'm glad I'm not what I used to be. Hallelujah. Huh? Can I say this? He touched me by confronting me. He touched me through conviction. He touched me in converting me, but because he touched me, now he communes with me. Look what the Bible says, verse 30. Look what it says. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face. Kind of sounds like communion to me. Uh, listen, I've not seen him with my literal eye, and I've not heard his literal voice, but I've seen him by faith. And I know his voice. How can you know his voice if you hadn't heard it? Oh, I know his voice. Because uh, when he speaks, my heart begins to ring. There's an alarm goes off inside. Uh, hey, uh, I'm glad I have sweet fellowship with the Holy One of Israel. Uh, I'm glad he communes with me. Uh, I'm glad he walks with me and talks with me. Uh, lets me know I'm one of his own. Uh, hey, I'm glad in the midnight hour when everybody else to sleep. Uh, he's already wide awake and welcoming my uh, uh, conversation. Uh, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad uh, I can commune with God. What a blessing, huh? Oh, because he touched me. See, if you don't know God, he don't even hear your prayers. Mm -mm. But I'm glad, hallelujah, once you come to know him, his ear is always inclined to your voice. Uh, he communes with me. Can I say this? Because he touched me, he certified me. So I'm nothing, Brother Bob. But to him, I'm something. Uh, he paid for my sin, Brother Phil. Brother James, he wrote me in his righteousness. Uh, 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 can I say, when he looks at me, he don't see me, he sees himself. He certified me. Uh, 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 look with me in, uh, in verse 30 again. Uh, he said, I've seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Uh, 
didn't say my life will be preserved. Brother Doug said it is preserved. Uh, I'm in him and he's in me. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm as good as already in glory. Are you listening? Uh, uh, my conversation is there. My citizenship is there. Uh, one of these days, uh, I, I'm going to catch up with all that and I'll be there. What a blessing. Uh, I'm certified, marker down. I'm heaven bound and nothing can change that. Uh, my sins have been washed in the blood of Christ. Uh, I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, hey, I'm certified. Saved child of God. What a blessing. And I wanted to get to this. He touched me. Because he touched me, he changed me. Look at verse 31. Look at it. Look at it. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Jacob's different now. He's halted on his thigh. He kind of walked like this. So he walked different. He looked different. He talked different. It's not the same. Folks that tell me they met the master and they go back to the same uh, hog pen that they supposedly got saved out of, they don't know him. Now don't get me wrong, you can step in a mud puddle, but you're not going to stay there. Are you listening? And God saves you, changes you. When he moved into you, Brother Tommy, uh, a business picked up. Uh, life was different. Uh, uh, you uh, 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 all of a sudden decided you wanted to go to church and read your Bible, uh, work with the kids in the kids club. Uh, you wanted to be a part of what God was doing. What's that about? That's a change. Uh, all of a sudden you've got songs of praise unto God now. Uh, all of a sudden you get in church. Uh, you hear some of them songs like we heard this morning. Your hand goes up. Uh, all of a sudden the tears get to flowing. Uh, uh, why? Because somebody's living on the inside of you. Uh, that wasn't there before. Uh, and it wells up every now and then uh, and you just got to let it go I'm glad he changed me when he saved me hmm? you walk a little different you don't go to the same places you used to go uh, you look a little different you talk a little different because he changed you hmm? he changed your outlook and he changed your future you once were headed to hell. Now you're going to glory. Uh, you once were, the, were, were a low life, no good, and sorry as the day is long, but now you're a child of God. Uh, used to, you was a, a thief or a drunk or a drug addict or a whoremonger. Uh, and now, uh, you're sitting on a church pew. Uh, 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 you're in your right mind. Uh, 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 you've been living for Jesus. Uh, your life's changed. You don't go the places you used to go. Uh, you don't associate with the crowd you used to associate with. Uh, everything's different because Jesus touched your life. Uh, I'm glad he changed me. Uh, uh, Brother Brian, on a day like this, you and Miss Veronica come out on that Harley running down the road acting like fools. But today you're in the house of God worshiping God. Because he came by your way and touched you, huh? Uh, that's what he does. He wrestles with you to, uh, uh, to change you, to save you and change you, friend. Because he loves you. He looked ahead and saw what your destiny was. He said, I, I've got something better for him. And he came by your way. Made a new creature out of you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And by the way, the false Bible say new creation. I'm the same old Doug Foster. But I'm different. That starts on the inside. Hmm. Uh, made a new creature out of me. Old things pass away. Behold, all things come new. Uh, hey, I was dead in trespasses and sin, but he raised me in the newness of life. Huh? Uh, uh, can I say the night I got saved, everything changed. The next morning, the sky looked bluer than it ever had looked. Uh, the birds sounded sweeter than they'd ever sang before. Hey, the grass was greener. Say, was it really? In my eyes, it was because I was looking through a different perspective. Uh, I'd met the Master, uh, and my life had changed because uh, He touched me. He touched me. He changed me. Mm. Now listen. 
his touch has consequences. Look again at verse 32. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. You see, his touch in your life will influence others. Influence the whole nation. Hmm? Jacob didn't tell them not to eat that part. But you see, they seen such a change in him. They said, in respect of him and what God's done in his life, we're not going to eat that part of it. He influenced others. Let me ask you something. Are you influencing anybody? Can they see that he's touched you? Hmm? They preach, I've been saved a long time, so they don't see the change. They've only known this part of me. They still ought to see his touch in your life. He influenced others. Others didn't influence him. I'm, 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 I hate to say this, but too many of God's people is letting others influence them. We're to influence the world. We're to be light and salt. Can I say his touch in your life will make an impression on others? They may not ever uh, 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 change their life. They may never come to church. They may never ever trust in Christ. But your life will make an impression on them. They'll never forget you. Can I say his touch in your life will interfere with others? Huh? You ever walk up on the job and somebody's foul mouth getting ready to say something foul and see you walk up and catch their tongue? You interfered with them. All you did was walk up. You know why the world hates the church? We interfere with them. We stand in opposition to what they're living for. Hmm? They hate it. Why do you think they said we were non-essential last year? Maybe in their eyes, but not in God's eyes. He loved the church and gave himself for it. But see, when he touches your life, you will interfere with others. They can't be happy in their sin around you. You interfere with them. Hmm? Friend, has he touched you? I think Brother Phil sings that song. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath the guilt of sin and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same He touched me Oh, He touched me Hey, has He ever touched you? Uh, how long has it been since He touched you? You're here today and you're lost. He wants to touch your life. That wrestling that's going on in your heart right now, there's an argument going on in your head. It's not with me, it's with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord's trying to get you to see you need Him. He loves you and He died for you. He allowed you to be here and wants to change your life. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to come. All you got to do is come give your heart and life to Him. He'll change you for all time and eternity. But child of God, how long has it been since he touched you? You know why we need revival? It's been a while since he's touched some of you. Oh, he's tried, but you got too much stuff in the way. He had to get Jacob alone. He's trying to slow you down and get you alone so he can touch you. Why don't you let him touch you today? Why don't you let him touch you real good, put his hands all over you so the world can see what Jesus has done in your life. I'm glad you touched me. I like his hand being close. I don't like going and having to look for him. I like knowing where he's at. How long has it been since he touched you? Center friend, God loves you. This church loves you. All these people here love you. In a moment during this invitation, the devil's going to put all kinds of thoughts in your head. What will these people think? I'll tell you what these people think. They'll think, boy, I'm glad you finally got it settled. <laughs> See, we all once stood where you're standing. There's nothing like being saved. There's nothing like knowing the sweet hand of God in your life. And oh, he'll, he'll change your life today if you'll let him. You see, he's a gentleman. He won't force himself on you. But he invites you to come. Why don't you let him have his way in your life? Christian friend, aren't you tired of going through life without his touch? 
without his power in your life, without his peace in your life, there's nothing like the hand of God. You know what a risk you are, just getting in your car and driving down the road. I want God with me. When's the last time he touched your life? When's the last time you came to church and it was so fresh and so real? Some of you this morning, you need to get that touch back. You need to get in this altar. Ask God to help you. Some of you know folks that need the hand of God in their life. You need to get in this altar and pray for them. Some of you just been going through the motions. You need to get that thing settled and get that thing made right. Above all, sinner friend, you need to get saved today. Today's the day of salvation. Say, preacher, I don't know how to get saved. If you come, we'll take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can get saved today. I would not leave this sanctuary today without the touch of God in my life. Get this close to him and not let him touch you, boy, something wrong. Jacob wouldn't let him go. That's the way we as Christians ought to be. We ought to get a hold of God and not let him go. Get the touch of God in our life. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. As they're coming, let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. I'm glad for the day you touched my life. I'm glad for the days you put your hand on my life since I've been saved. Oh God, I pray. The crowd this size, you know every need, you know every heart, you know the number of hair on every head. God, I pray you'd speak to hearts now. I pray especially for that one that may be here that's unsaved. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would convict them, wrestle with them, and draw them to the saving knowledge of Christ. God, I pray for your people. They desire your touch once again. I pray you just work at this invitation now. Speak to hearts and lives. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.